Te Iosef celebre, tagmina celi tu, te cum ti My field of study, outside of our normal Dominican fields of study of philosophy and theology, is the study of sacred music. And principally, I was trained to be a liturgical musician. One thing liturgical musicians, though, need to do that most other musicians don't is improvise. Why? Well, often in the liturgy, there are extra spaces. For instance, at the end of the offertory, you might, your choir might be done with its motet or offertory chant, and there's still some space needed. Maybe the priest isn't done with his insensation. Or at communion, when the, all the faithful have not come up yet, but the communion chant has ended. The good liturgical musician then needs to be able to improvise on the organ to cover that liturgical action. Now, it just so happened that during our seminary days, there was one young brother who came in with a bunch of piano background, was not an organist, didn't learn how to improvise. So he learned how to play the organ. He could play the notes and do that quite well. However, during the liturgy, there would be times where he would just have dead space. So one Sunday he asked me, brother, can you please help me learn to improvise? So we sat down and began to learn. And what he was astounded about was that I didn't take him to the organ first and show him sort of technique. What I did was go through and rehearse a plan of improvisation. How can you do this? How can you do that? How can you harmonize this melody? How can you put this melody against another melody? How does this note follow to the next note? How do your whole chord follow to the next chord? These are called the rules of harmony, voice leading, and counterpoint. And he was astounded and said, if I'm going to have freedom, I've got to learn all these rules. He said, it sounds like you just sit down at the organ and you play. I said, well, I do. But it comes from a lifetime of having those rules, those laws of harmony, counterpoint, and voice leading drilled into me and practicing them myself. In order to have that freedom to improvise, I had to be obedient to the laws of music and music theory. St. Joseph is known as the most obedient, and indeed he absolutely is. In fact, we see, especially in sacred scripture, three times where Joseph was obedient in a radical way. Joseph, do not be afraid to take Mary into your home as your wife, said the angel in a dream. Joseph, Herod wants to kill the baby. Get the mother and the child and go out of town down to Egypt. And Joseph, evil Herod is dead. You can return, but now go to Nazareth and raise the child. St. Joseph did all three of these things, radically going and following where the Lord commanded with obedience, with alacrity, and without saying a word. St. Joseph has no words recorded in sacred scripture. One of the greatest saints, and we don't have a word. But that's okay, because St. Joseph was obedient, but not with his words, with his actions, immediately following God. And if you think about it, too, it's incredibly extraordinary because St. Joseph never even saw a miracle. St. Joseph didn't see an, a vision of angels. He only had a dream. St. Joseph didn't see all the miracles, the raising from the dead. He didn't see our Lord rise from the dead. All St. Joseph had was a dream. The Blessed Mother saw the angels. The apostles saw the water change into wine. They saw him raise Lazarus from the dead. And, of course, the gift of Pentecost. St. Joseph, none of that. Yet he was obedient to God's will. Brothers and sisters, in our age in the United States, we often see freedom as opposed to obedience, right? Freedom in opposition to obedience. Freedom means I can do whatever I want as long as I don't hurt somebody. And they don't often think even what does hurting someone mean, including self. But what true freedom is, is like that person who is able to improvise. The person who has habituated all the laws, 
all the precepts of the moral life, all the precepts of justice, all the commands given by God, and then is able to follow and to do something excellent, to do something wonderful, to do something for God. If I said, with regard to improvisation, I'm free to do whatever I want. I can play whatever notes against I want to one another. That wouldn't be freedom. It'd be a bunch of cacophonous noise. It'd be chaos, banging around, instead of something beautiful, instead of something artistic, instead of something truly wonderful. The same way in our human life. We can be obedient to the laws. And then having those laws sort of become second nature, habituated into our lives, into our actions, and gives us freedom. Freedom to follow God's plan for our life no matter where it takes us. Even if it takes us someplace radical. To follow along in true obedience. Because we have total freedom. Because we have followed God's law. Both the natural law and the supernatural law. Brothers and sisters, in this day and age, we then need to make a return to God even more than ever. We need to take to heart all the precepts and the commands he's given us, both in the scriptures and also in the natural law, the things that are just written into our hearts. And from this, we can then begin to experience the true freedom, the freedom of a virtuous person, the freedom for excellence. We do this in the image of St. Joseph, so that we might follow God radically on the way he's called us. But above all, we also do it because we want to get to heaven, to become saints, to follow where God is truly calling us. Let us then be obedient, but obedient with our view towards real freedom, that real freedom to be excellent here on earth, and with God's grace to achieve the ultimate excellence of becoming a saint, apart from which in the end, nothing else much really matters. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Novena Prayer to St. Joseph. O glorious St. Joseph, Father of Jesus Christ and Husband of Mary, we raise our minds and hearts to you, imploring your powerful intercession. Obtain from the Lord all the graces we need, for our spiritual and temporal welfare, particularly those intentions that we bring now before St. Joseph. O guardian of the Word incarnate, confident that your prayers will be graciously heard before the throne of God, we ask you to look favorably on our petitions. Assist us on our way so that we may at last enjoy eternal life with you and all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.